sure you point the board here. So this is take two of the Olson science experiment. Go. All right, today we are finding the work done by an elastic band. We hadn't talked about elastic bands before. What we have talked about is lift and weights. If you were to lift a 500 Newton weight from the ground, you would have to push 500 Newtons for the whole two meters. That would be 500 Newtons times two meters or a thousand Newton meter, a thousand joules of work done on the thing. But you're constantly pushing this 500. Elastic items are a little different than that because right now at zero meters, it's going to be able to do no work. It's got no stress on it whatsoever. So we're going to find how much work is done by stretching this thing, which that's not exciting. But it's exciting when we find the work done on this thing. We're going to put scientist Peyton on this. Um, flip around, see the camera there, hon. And scientist Peyton on this, and she's going to fly towards that fence or the bush over there. And we're going to find out how much kinetic energy she has because the work that this does converts that potential called elastic potential energy and the kinetic energy of scientist Peyton flying into the fence or the bush here, whichever it is. <laughs> but first, we have to find the work done. Scientist Peyton, are you ready? Zero meters at zero force. Write that down. One meter, that's 23 newtons. Two meters, that is 37 newtons. Three meters, it is a force of 48 newtons. Okay. Four meters, that is a force of 56 newtons. Five meters, that is a force of 63 newtons. Six meters, that is a force of 72 newtons. Seven meters, that is a force of 83 newtons. And finally, at eight meters, that is a force of 92 newtons. Okay, so scientist Peyton, would you please calculate, show, the, calculate the work done, because I'm going to do this from 8 meters. So we're going to find out how much work is done at 8 meters, then I'll, we'll show them how to go back and do it at 5 meters. We're going to calculate away. Find the work done at 8 meters, because that's what I want to do at 8 meters. Calculate away, guys. Tell me when you're done with your calculations there, scientist Peyton. You got it? Don't forget to do the line of best fit there. Perfect. Then do it, okay? Wow, you're fast at calculating this stuff. Okay. So am I too close? Is this perfect? Okay, I can't I can't see I can't see the Okay. Here, let's try to go the, oh, there there I can oh, see. Oh there it now. we go. Alright, so what scientist Peyton has done, we start out at zero newtons at zero distance. At one meter, she graphed um, the forces, and at every single meter we went. Now, it's not a straight line, so the best fit might not indeed be a straight line, but we're going to pretend at least it is a fairly straight line, at least for this, because it's going to make finding the work a lot easier. So you notice, differently than lifting a barbell up in the air, the force is variable. It's a changing force. So to find the work done, we actually like to graph this out because the work done is actually the area under curve that scientist Peyton has marked out over here. Now, if it was always 92 newtons, that'd be a straight line, and the work would be rather easy. 92 times 8 meters, done. That's the work done. However, being an elastic cord, it's a variable force. So at the first half, it was much less than 92. For the fact, for all of these, it's less than 92. So, but what we do to find the work done in a variable force, we actually do a graph of force versus the displacement. So what scientist Peyton does, some of you might be taking the C test, it's the integral, because you're doing the, you're integrating this, is what you're doing, the force and, and, and displacement. But since it's a linear line, we don't have to do a fancy curve over here. We can just do a half, which is a triangle, 92 times eight, but it's half of that area, which Peyton has calculated to be 368 joules. So that ought to be the kinetic energy I have as I slam into the bush or the fence, whatever comes close over here. And now when Peyton does this, she's going to do this at 5. So we'd go up to the blue line at 5 and straight over, it looks like about 60. So the work done at her would be 60 times 5, which is 300, but a half of that is 150. So she would only have 150 joules of work on her, but here's the thing. 
As soon as she hits the fence or the bushes, she ought to have 150 joules of kinetic energy. I'm not going to hit the fence or the bushes. We're going to see. <laughs> Hopefully you will. So your job is to find out what that velocity should be. Her mass is 35 kilograms with the rolly thing. Okay. Next, we'll do me with 368 joules of work done at 8 meters, and I have a mass of 83 kilograms. We're also going to find out what that velocity is as well. All right, time for the science. Peyton, scientist Peyton, grab your rolly thing. We're going live here. We're going live. We're going live. Oh, yeah, you have to hold it. Oh. Hey, hey, hey. Five meters, five meters. All right. Stop, we have to run out my feet. But seriously, you got to actually hit the bush or the fence. You can't stop yourself after zero meters. Okay, do your best. Do your best. <coughs> so when you're ready, let her fly and just go. 150 joules of work right there. Ooh, and she had to put the brakes on, but there you go. So passing the zero meters, how fast would that be? Remember, she's 35 kilograms. Now let's do the big scientist. <laughs> Big, the big scientist, five is not exciting enough. <laughs> Gotta get a little more exciting. 368 joules of work done by the time I hit the zero. Woo! Hello, Bush. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the speed upon hitting the bush? <laughs> now, we've made some other calculations over here. So to wrap this up, there's a second way to find velocities. The second way, when Peyton, since Peyton was doing this while I was getting everything ready, and if we look at this versus time, remember if it's force and displacement, we're finding work and kinetic energy. If we're doing force and time, we're actually looking at impulse versus momentum. So now force versus the time, it took me 4.68 seconds um, to go from the eight meters and hit the zero. So once again, you can do an integration, which is the area, which is the impulse. But since it's a triangle is the area under there, it's one half the 92, which is my maximum force, assuming it is a straight line, times the time, 4.68, 215 newton seconds of impulse. That means my gain in momentum should be 215 kilogram meters per second, which is, is the exact same unit as 250 newton seconds. So if I have a mass of 83 kilograms, this is another way to find my velocity. It's just 215 divided by the 83. See how that compares to the using energy to find what the speed is. That's what your challenge is. So how fast was I going using the impulse momentum theory versus how fast was I going using the work energy theorem? So the advantage of one is, sure it's a vector amount when it's not a vector amount, you always have the same momentum. You can always keep track of it unless there are external forces acting on it. But the same thing can happen with your work and your energy. You can actually use either case to find the velocity of things um, depending on what you're measuring. End. Say bye. Bye.